No, I think that um, student athletes need to be seriously considering uh, leveraging them, their popularity at the time of being a student athlete to get into the creator economy. It is, of course, an extremely low barrier of entry now to get into the creator economy. Anyone can throw up a TikTok video. Anyone can make a podcast or or make you know a post on on Instagram now. It doesn't cost anything. It's quick. It's easy. Uh, there's people who are more naturally talented at it. Therefore, there's you know everybody's doing it. So it's hard to stand out. And by having you know something so unique that you have the support of college, you have, you know, probably local fans as a student athlete, you know, you should be, I, I would recommend leveraging all of that. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, family? And welcome to another episode of Beyond the Ball. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and this is the area where we help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. We focus on uh, pouring into student athletes as well as uh, the staff who serve and support them. And uh, just like any other episode, I'm excited uh, for our guest today uh, because this individual, man, I, I, is really innovative, right? In innovative in many, many different ways. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to belabor uh, the weight in any longer. Um, but without further ado, I want to go ahead and welcome to the show, Anna Junajay. Anna, how are you doing? I'm doing great. So excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Gl gl glad to have you. Glad to have you. And Anna, so just with everything that's that's like taken off and, you know, as we're in 2023 now, right, we're, 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 we're seeing uh, a, a lot of um, we're, we're seeing a lot of things happen with technology. We're, we're seeing a lot of things happen by way of in the NIL space and with, with, with NIL uh, and student athletes are getting paid large quantities of money and everything like that. From, from where you are, from a, from a content perspective, right? From a content and creator perspective, please j just, just share, share, share with us. Well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Before I get there, before I get there, I have to, I have to give you just the proper, the proper intro. You're, you know, you're the number one trademark lawyer on social media. Let's talk about that for a second. How, how did this come to be? And why, why is this where, where you're, where, where, where you're staking your claim, where, where you're putting your flag? Talk, talk with us, Anna, talk with us. Yeah. So I have actually worked in this field of law for many years. I studied this in law school, which most people study more generally, but I focused really on this in law school. I worked at the United States Patent and Trademark Office in law school. And immediately, you know, when I became a lawyer, I started working at an international intellectual property law firm. So I have been in this field for many, many years, and I've done really specialized work in this field. So um, now, you know, I'm, I'm just continuing to do the, the same work that I was trained for and have been doing for a long time. Um, I think that you know, I originally started posting some tips and the way I talk, I think is very casual and it's very, uh, there isn't a lot of jargon in it. It's not very technical. And I do that on purpose. I do that because in general, as an attorney, it's easier to be able to explain to your clients what's going on and it's easier for them to understand it. And I think there just isn't a lot of, there aren't a lot of people doing that and there definitely aren't a lot of people doing that on social media. And I think that's kind of how this all came to be. Um, but I wouldn't say I'm doing anything really different than, you know, I, I thought I was going to be doing. I definitely always thought that I'd probably work at that firm or, or some sort of firm like that. So your path can change, you know, just due to different things in life. But in terms of the work I'm doing and, and the type of law and rights that I'm talking about for people and educating them on there. It's really, you know, what I've have been doing for so many years. Yeah. And, and you, and you initially got your, you, you initially got, got one of your degrees studying biology, correct? Yes. So actually a lot of people, not, the, um, not everyone, but uh, people who work, especially if you work at a firm and you are an attorney, there's a, let me just back up a second. There are a lot of people that you will see on social media that switched into the trademark field 
Um, they don't really practice like full intellectual property, though. They tend to stick to trademarks or copyrights because to practice patent law, you actually have to have a science background and you just have to have a science background just to sit for that patent bar. And um, so in law school, if you have a science background, you are sort of geared towards and pushed towards IP. But in general, a lot of the social media trademark attorneys and things, they actually like worked in a different field or they're very new attorneys, like they haven't worked at a firm and they just switched into trademark law. So um, because it's very, for lawyers, it's sometimes considered desirable because you can work from home and there's no, there's not a lot of court and things like that. So a lot of people think that it's, you know, quote unquote, better lifestyle field. There's been a big influx of trademark attorneys, I feel on social media and stuff, but they don't really have the same IP background that like a IP attorney who's worked at a firm would have. Fair enough. And then can, can you just break down for us what 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 is IP? Because, I, you know, this, like this is a term that that I know in the legal space this is a term, you know, used frequently, used often. Uh, but, you know, for, for our student athletes out there, they, they might not be exactly familiar um, with. And I'm, I'm also using it just to get a refresher for me. Uh, if, if you were to break down or, or simplify the, the term IP, yeah. like what, 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 what does that mean? So IP means intellectual property, and it's basically everything that's, you know, it's not everything, but it, it's basically intangible assets that are extremely valuable. In fact, IP assets are the most valuable thing that a business or an individual could ever own. Uh, when you look at most businesses, their IP is worth far more than anything else in their business to a degree of between, you know, 50 to 70%. So if you look at the app, the Apple itself, their brand is worth, you know, probably 30 to 40% of the worth of their business there. That means their trademark portfolio and then their patents, their, their technology is worth, you know, most of the rest of it. Of course you have people, you have, um, equipment and factories and, and flows and things like that. Those are all really valuable, important to run a business, but they don't come anywhere near the value of IP. And in fact, it's not just for big companies, it's for everyone, their individual, you know, whether you're an individual, whether you are a small business, IP is going to be broken down into four, I would say, main sectors that people should be concerned about. One is going to be your copyright, copyrighted content, for example, if you write a book, uh, the copyrights cover everything from architecture, software, photos, videos, music, content that you create, graphics, poems, uh, anything that's an original work of authorship. That's one big portion of IP. The second one is trademarks. This is going to be anything that is about your brand. So when it comes down to uh, your name, your logo, your slogan, but also things like colors, designs, shapes, smells, anything that the public associates with your goods and services is a trademark of your brand. Tra trademark, they're identifying the source of goods and services. So that is all protected, you know, via trademark law. And then patents protect inventions. This is going to be more, you know, people invent a tool, a chemical a formula, things like that. That's going to be covered by patent law. And then the last one is actually trade secrets, um, which this is anything of value that you've taken steps to keep a secret and um, that would cause you, you know, harm if, 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 uh, if it got out. So Another one that I really want to talk about, though, because we're talking to athletes, is that name image likeness. This it can encompass multiple of these uh, areas of IP because it's going to cover, of course, the copyright and trademark areas, both of them. And also there's a right to publicity. So that is also a very important component. I would almost call it a fifth sector of the, a type of IP, even though it encompasses a couple of other ones. So that's a breakdown of what IP is. And it's very difficult sometimes if you haven't done it before, you don't have any experience to identify actually what IP you have. And student athletes, they probably have a lot of it that they're not really protecting and leveraging because at the end of the day, it's not just about saying you have XYZ patents and trademarks and copyrights. It's actually about saying, oh yes, I have XYZ patents, copyrights, trademarks, and this is why, you know, I need to negotiate this deal and get more for it. Or this is why you're not allowed to do that with my name. So there's a lot of ways it needs to be leveraged, protected, 
monitored and you know all of that is for the individual who owns or the business that owns that ip's benefit yeah uh man that's some that's something great <laughs> i, I mean, know i just talked a lot one more thing is you know ip really can be thought of as you have income generating assets and activities and intangible things such as you know, if you're an athlete, for example, your name itself, you're a picture of your face, those have inherent value because brands can use it to sell things. Uh, so things like that, you're, you know, getting your IP protection in place, being knowledgeable about it, leveraging it in deals, that's just protecting your income generating activity and your income generating assets. So losing your IP rights or not being aware of them and leveraging them can can lead to a huge loss monetarily for people. And the earlier on you can realize your rights, the better off it is. Certainly, I mean, protection is is, is essential. And, and, and I think it's one of those things to where we oftentimes don't hear about protection until it's too late, right? You, you like you hear about the, you know, the athlete or the, the creator or whoever it might be is in a position to where they're like, well, wait a minute, how are they using my picture? Or how are they doing this and doing that? And then you would have to ask the individual, well, did you consider getting somebody else to look at the contract before you just signed it because you're excited about the amount that you were getting? Did you understand that the contract you signed also had a non-compete clause in it to where it lets you know that, you know, you can only work with this person and you can't work with other entities that may have a similar product or whatever it might be. So I think that's one of the things that re it, it really it really hurts me. Anna, it hurts me to see uh, a, a lot of times individuals who don't have the protection or you know or, or, or didn't get that didn't get that legal li legal insight. So if, if if somebody is saying I don't have an attorney in place or I, I don't have any legal insight, right? Where, where, where would you say that, that somebody should start in terms of like identifying the right fit or the right attorney um, for, for them just to navigate through this space? Yeah, so I think the first thing is understanding um, exactly what rights you have. I think that's a very important component. So, you know, an athlete is going to have different types of IP rights than a engineer or, you know, a tech CEO that owns a company. So for, you know, a, an athlete, a student athlete, they, you really want to work with someone. And this goes for everyone, every type of business, everyone who's ever looking for a lawyer, actually in any field. Um, if you are doing anything transactional, which means something that has to do with money and paperwork, basically you really need to find an attorney that understands your business. That is the most important component whatsoever. If you are, you know, a student athlete and you are about to go do TikTok brand deals with some sports companies, you cannot be going to an attorney that doesn't even know the difference between TikTok and Twitter. They have no idea what protections you need, how to leverage it, how much things are valued. So you really need to understand, you know, they need to understand your revenue streams, your business, how you're making money. What are the risks involved with that? Uh, there's IP attorneys that you know, don't know anything about supply chain and they don't know anything about global business and the different risks that are involved with, with a global supply chain. Um, there's IP attorneys that don't understand technology or social media and things. So you want to make sure that you're confident that your attorney actually understands how you're making money because that's what you're trying to protect is your, re you know, your revenue stream, which your IP is a revenue stream. So that's the most important component. I would say you know, see who you're comfortable with. There are not very many amazing IP attorneys, I would say, on social media. They uh, tend, you know, it's not a super common thing to have lawyers on social media in general. So, you know, you can definitely look elsewhere. You can um, ask for referrals, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, what you bringing up TikTok, <laughs> I think you're somebody who, who does, does pretty well on TikTok or, or or has you know has a significant following on 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 TikTok. How how did you determine which social media wor worked best for you and your brand? Right, like how did you like, how did you identify? I, I think TikTok is a good place for me to create content, and and Instagram is what. Like, how did you 
narrow down, you know, which one made the most sense and then decide to go all in to, to those platforms? Um, I don't know that I really picked before I started. I think TikTok uh, is a very powerful tool in terms of you can make a pretty good quality video in a couple of minutes because they give you a lot of editing and options and things like that. And that's really why I started because I just wanted to get things out really fast. And at that time, now I have a video editor and, you know, other help, but at that time I didn't have anything. And what could I do to, to create a few pieces of content every day um, to try to, you know, grow my business and get my name out there without having to invest money or time or go learn how to use these video editing softwares and things. And TikTok was very easy for that. And then, you know, I kind of pushed my audience onto Instagram and other places, but that's really why I started on TikTok. And I think when I started, there weren't a lot of people talking about what I wanted to talk about. And that's where the success came from, just because at that time, there was more of a scarcity of information in that realm. Now, I think there's a lot of people on TikTok talking about the same things. Um, but at that time, you know, a year or so ago, there wasn't. Understood. Understood. So, so looking at looking at the creator economy, and you know, just 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 seeing what what like what the numbers are, hundred billion dollar industry. Do you feel? that all athletes could find a lane in the creator economy space? Or do you think that the creator economy space only applies to some? No, I think that um, student athletes need to be seriously considering uh, leveraging them, their popularity at the time of being a student athlete to get into the creator economy. It is, of course, an extremely low barrier of entry now to get into the creator economy. Anyone can throw up a TikTok video. Anyone can make a podcast or, or make you know a post on, on Instagram now. It doesn't cost anything. It's quick. It's easy. Uh, there's people who are more naturally talented at it. Therefore, there's you know everybody's doing it. So it's hard to stand out. And by having, you know, something so unique that you have the support of college, you have, you know, probably local fans as a student athlete, you know, you should be, I, I would recommend leveraging all of that. Um, you always want to leverage everything you can. And, you know, athletes are not really relevant forever. And if you don't use the popularity while you have it, I think it would go away and you'll miss that window of opportunity. Oh my goodness. Athletes aren't relevant forever. Anna, wow. That that <laughs> nobody's that is, relevant is, forever unless you stay relevant. It's hard no, work. True. To, true. To no, that. no, no. I'm no, I'm glad you I'm glad you said the question because it's it, it's 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 very, very true. It's it's very true. Um, but to your point, yeah, everybody has the point where there's an opportunity where you might peak and you know what, what you take advantage of or, or 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 what you don't uh will will depend on what your what your what your decisions are, right? Uh, now I want I want to talk a little bit about I want to talk a little bit about about the metaverse space, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, from from what I've what I've been seeing, and 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 I feel you, I, well, I know you definitely know better than me, but what I what I've been seeing, NFTs came and they you know they came in like a wrecking ball, and now to me it seemed like the NFT space has been quieted out a little bit. Where, where, where do you see it's going from like what you've read, from what you've learned, from like what you think? Do, do, do you think NFTs are, are done? Do you think like where, where do you think the NFT space is going now? You know, a lot of IP as well. Uh, a lot of and NFTs are just IP. So a lot of intangible assets such as content, NFTs, artwork. Uh, that type of item is really only as valuable as supply and demand allows it to be and as public perception allows it to be. So for example, if you were, if you had the opportunity to spend your life savings to go buy a original Van Gogh painting, I mean, you're probably going to do that because you know the value of it. 
Um, but if you were going to go and buy a painting that you really liked from somebody who wasn't a well-known artist and you were going to have to spend your life savings on it, you probably wouldn't do that unless there was some reason to do so. Like the public was saying, this guy is the next Van Gogh. Then, you know, yeah, it definitely makes sense to get in on that, you know, if it, if the numbers work out for you. So the NFTs and a lot of content in general or items are really valued by the hype around them and the value that the public gives them. So, uh, you know, I don't think NFTs at this moment are maybe as valuable as they were a year or so ago. I definitely agree with you there. I think that the space is quieted because for those type of trends and to monetize on hype, you really have to get in very early. And once everyone gets in, it's not as valuable anymore and it's harder to make money. So that's why um, if you are some sort of creative or you have some sort of opportunity to leverage your IP, you really have to do so sooner than later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's fair. That's fair. All right. So, so st staying in this realm, uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about, a little bit about AI, right? As, as, as we've seen what chat, chat GPT, uh, I, I saw chat GPT, the bot passed a bar exam. I saw it pass. Uh, I think it was a medical license exam. Do you think we're still on the early hype of AI? Like, what, what, what's, what, what, what's, what's your thoughts there, Anna? What's your thoughts? Yeah, there? I mean, it doesn't surprise me that it passed exams because exams are mostly about in taking information and outputting it under timed and pressurized conditions. So it's actually not very surprising if you give somebody the answers to an exam and they are programmed to memorize all of it and know it, and five minutes later they regurgitate it, it's not quite as impressive, I think, as it's being hyped up to be. A lot of programs can answer questions. So it's there's more to being a doctor or a lawyer than um, regurgitating information. So I don't think that AI is currently at the level where it can do the level of analysis that a human can do. I think it, it's definitely very close, but I don't think AI is able to um, make those internal human decisions that are a reason for a lot of human error in high stakes medical legal situations, but they're also the reason that a lot of things win or people live and are saved. So there's a human component to everything that will be lost as AI does more and more functions of these jobs and positions. But I think that um, it is an amazing tool that people should be using because there is a lot of routine work. There's a lot of low level basic research work um, that, you know, we're paying our assistants or our law clerks or, you know, uh, maybe nurses or, or medical students to be doing in these type of situations that AI has the capacity to replace or heavily assist with. So people need to start leveraging AI in their daily life. I find it's very useful. I mean, who wants to spend 20 minutes writing an email to your HOA about, you know, why you really want this fence put up? You know, ChatGPT can do it and it's good enough. So for a lot of that stuff where you just need random things done and it can just be good enough, you know, chat GPT can do it. And that's even in business too. Sometimes you need a follow-up email written. You don't want to spend 20 minutes. I think it can save people, you know, at least a couple of hours a day, which is huge over time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Are like, are there like your, your top three AI apps that, that you use or like, do you have, you know, like top, top three, top five, you're like, I think these apps are the ones that, make the most sense or that, that, that you use in, you know, in your day to day? Um, chat GPT is really good because it's brought AI to a level that I think we can all use it, even if you're not really techie. Um, and there's a couple of legal softwares that I use that utilize AI. One is core search and it is a trademark search, um, system. And I've used that for many, many years and the AI is very good. It, it was probably the first one to be extremely good in our in my industry 
now there's a lot of newer, smaller companies coming up that claim to have similar or better AI. I don't think that I have a favorite. I could absolutely live without it because I don't think it's that good yet. <laughs> so if that makes sense. I don't have any AI out there that I think I, I mean, I haven't been able to get rid of any of my staff, my, any of my assistants, any of, you know, the people who I work with. So I haven't been able to cut out any components of my life at this time without a severe reduction in quality, just using AI. So I don't have a favorite. And I think it's more important for people just to start using it and get familiar with it than be relying on it right now. Mm. Yeah, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because just like even with and of course, iPhones aren't, you know, AI, but like even with, uh, you know, with the iPhone, even when they put out their new version, whichever one that is, right, 14, 15, whichever one, um, there's always some little tweaks that still need to be made. So I can appreciate, you know, you really drilling down talking about that there's a there's an element that's going to be lost when we eliminate a human because there's still yes. gonna need some tweaks I to think be made. For very routine, low-level tasks, it's a good supplement right now. Uh, for example, if you absolutely can't afford a lawyer, but you need an NDA drafted, um, I think having ChatGPT write a basic NDA would be equivalent to going on Google and finding one. And ChatGPT is going to do it quicker than you go searching on Google. Is it a replacement to an attorney who understands your business and is able to write an extremely favorable and strong protective NDA for you? Absolutely not. It's nowhere close. But not every attorney does that, even if you pay them as much as, you know, a real as lawyers get paid. So for I think mediocrity is going to end or people will get booted out. And I, I even I even read somewhere or I think I actually heard Billy, Billy Jean make mention of it. He said that Google, I believe, is looking to create their own version of AI, uh, I, I didn't. I didn't go too deep into it, but I saw the video. I saw him make mention of it, and I saw the article, and I was like, "Huh." Now, if Google goes into this, then that, I, I think that's gonna. Re I think that's going to really elevate the playing field and just make sure that you know the competitor, the Chat GPT, or whoever else comes to the scene, they're gonna have to continue to elevate. Uh, with what they're doing as well. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing what, what happens with it all. I'm curious. Yeah, me too. I think the technology to do a lot of things um, is really, really close, even if it's not here today. And I don't think I'm in some Facebook boards with there's one that's IP or trademark attorneys. And people sometimes will leave posts in there that say, do you think chat GPT and AI are going to be replacing trademark attorneys soon? And there'll be so many comments like, no, it's not a replacement for a real lawyer. Absolutely not. There's lawyers do so much stuff, you know, um, besides evaluating auditing and things like that, you know, chat GPT could, could do a trademark, you know, trademark applications and the arguments required for office action responses and things are extremely routine work. I could, that's why if you're very experienced in that, it's very quick for you. It's very methodical and you have very good success rates. There's no reason that chat GPT isn't going to be able to do that and, or AI isn't going to do that in a couple of years. So, um, you know, I think the technology is actually a lot closer than people think and they feel threatened by it. But once it comes, there's going to be a competitor that comes in another and it's going to elevate so quickly that people should really, like I said, get used to it, start leveraging it and do not just try to dismiss it. Well, I'll take that challenge upon myself as well, because I mean, I've seen posts about it. I've, I've looked into it. I play with chat GPT a little bit, uh, but I'm going to I'm, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper there now also, because I guess I have to. So it, 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 it makes sense. I don't want to I don't want to get left behind. I don't, don't want to be left behind. No, no me no, too. Me too. Yeah. No, nobody wants to be. Nobody wants. To yeah, be I think person. we all feel that way. So we and I think this has been a this has been in talks for decades, right? People thought, okay, robots are going to run the world. And now I think chat GPT came and it was so, I mean, it was so explosive when it came. Mm -hmm. I remember they said in like three days or something, it was the most used downloaded website or whatnot than, than they've ever seen before, something like that. So I think chat GPT came 
so unexpectedly, randomly almost. People didn't really know of the development behind it. And it was so incredibly easy for anyone to use. And that really, I think, shook people. It's one thing to say, oh, I have this software that can do X, Y, Z task. And, and yes, let me train you. You're going to go on a three-day training to learn how to use this software. That's one thing. That's not, that's not replacing every aspect of your life in any way, shape, or form. Chat GPT, people, you know, if you're a social media manager, if you're a content writer, I mean, they're definitely worried. You know, if you're a lawyer who drafts contracts, you know, they're, they're worried that, okay, now I actually have to either do better than this or I, I'm going to be left behind. This is true. This is very, this is very true. This is very true. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, before, before we get into, before we get into our, uh, our, 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 our rapid fire, I, I, I want to ask you this. What's one question that someone has never asked you that you wish they did? Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, What should people do to increase the value of their IP today? Hmm. What, what, would the, what would the answer be? <laughs> well, I mean, I know um, that's a that's, the first that's thing to, Yeah, the answer would be you need to sit down for a little bit of time and write down on pen and paper on your computer, write down every single way that you've made money and why you think people are paying you the things that you do and self audit your revenue and your business and yourself. So if you're getting brand deals, why are they giving you brand deals? Maybe because your social handle is very valuable because you have this many followers. Are you, you know, people paying you for a book that you've written? Are people paying you because you do speaking appearances because you do, you know, shoe deals with, with, shoe stores and shoe brands or athletic brands, you know, write down what's going on in your life and your business and why people find value in you. And you will actually find that um, you, most of that is probably coming from your IP. So what can you do today to increase the value of your IP is actually sit there and identify it. And then next time you go for a deal and people want to use your you know, name in association with them. Well, that's actually, you know, go get your trademark for your name and then go and say, okay, well, that's actually a brand collaboration and I need to charge this much to use my name to license it. So identifying is the first step. And if you can't identify where you're making money and why people are paying you certain things, no lawyer is going to be able to help you sufficiently. So you need to do that first step even before you think about going to hire a lawyer. They can do it for you, but if they have to extract information, it will be like pulling teeth and you'll pay a lot of money for it for no reason. Sheesh. Sheesh. That. So all the student athletes watching this should be doing that today. Oh my goodness. Anna, that was so good. That was, so... <laughs> oh my goodness. That was good. Okay, man. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna uh, we're gonna transition into uh, our, our rapid fire segment where we just you know just lighten up a little bit on the show, and uh, I'm just gonna ask you just some fun just some fun questions. So Anna, are you are you ready? Yes. Okay. Favorite cereal. Um, Frosted Flakes. Classic, classic. Um, Apple or, or droid? Apple. Okay. Beaches or mountains? Beaches. Work hard, play hard? Both. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, content creation or, or, oh man, that, that, that is content creation. I, I was going to say you interviewing other people or other people interviewing you. Let me say that. Other people interviewing me. Okay. Because then the, then the work falls on them to edit and all that. <laughs> oh, man. TikTok or LinkedIn? LinkedIn. Uh, okay. Fair enough. That's it. That's it. That's a, 
Wow, really? Why, 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 why LinkedIn over TikTok? I'm just curious. Oh my gosh, I think TikTok and uh, Instagram are just, I, I, you know, I, I'm grateful for my following, and I'm grateful that you know some of the stuff I did worked, and it benefited me so much. But it is not like I, not everybody has that personality that they want to be so exposed and uh, you know subject to so much commentary. And I think <laughs> that's why I like LinkedIn more. L people are less anonymous on LinkedIn. Uh, so guess. if they're saying something to me, which they, you know, people are not going to say the kind of stuff they say on other, if they're anonymous, if, you know, on LinkedIn. So yes, I think it's just more civil. Understood. Uh, un understood. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. Uh, now I want to, want to talk about the, the winter circle of the week. And this is just the, uh, this is just the space to where you get the opportunity just to shout out somebody or, or highlight somebody you feel is doing doing great work uh, and you feel that they would be a great person that I should interview next here. So, Anna, who, who would that person be for you? And you can say more than one person because most of the time people are like, ah, uh, they say more than one person. But who, who would that person be for you? You're like, this person is doing great work. Uh, I've seen them really, really grind, really put in the time and the hours. Please share yeah, who that person um, is. So I really think there's one attorney. Her name is Jeanette Braun. She is a patent attorney. She's a second generation patent practitioner. Her mom also had a patent firm. And she works with a lot of people in the entertainment space, um, small businesses, I think athletes. I'm sure she does. Um, but she really uh, has a lot of experience when it comes to the contract side of things and the deals people sign and kind of really scary IP mistakes that have been made. I'll just give you a really quick example of why I'm like obsessed with her stories. There is a brand, I think maybe it's called Debbie something. It's They make little snacks and she wanted to compete with her competitors. I think we've seen them all in, the, in grocery stores and she put a window in her packaging, like where they have the clear wrapping where you can see what's inside. And, you know, she didn't file a patent on that, right? That's a massive competitive advantage you have. You've now created this way that consumers can see inside of your box, right? How scary is it that she did not get a patent on that? And now everybody can use that. It's just, she's not, she wasn't an inventor. She was just a regular person who wanted to make her business do well. And she created this little aspect of it. And um, if she had gotten a patent on it, how valuable that would have been because she could have licensed it to people. She could have sold to a big company. So it's she, Jeanette Braun um, has a lot of these kind of insights. She, I think she's like a really into history and, and into the history of IP. And it's just really gets me thinking about how to convey to people that it's everyday things you do with your IP that are so incredibly valuable and can be monetized. Because at the end of the day, you know, IP is all about passive income. That's the premise of IP, create once, monetize forever. Um, so, you know, being able to uh, get insights from her, I think would be extremely valuable to the audience. I love it. I love it. Create once, monetize I'll forever. I'll connect you guys via email too. Okay. I, I, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. Okay. And now as we get ready to land, land the plane, uh, I, I want to, I, I want to ask you, and then, well, before, before I even ask this final question, uh, wh how can people c stay connected with you, stay plugged in, uh, or, or even, you know, reach out if, if, if they feel that, you know, they're like, Hey, I, I love what Anna said. I need Anna's help. Uh, what, what would be the best way for people to connect with you right before I ask this last question? Yeah. Um, I'm on, like every social has at Anna Janaja or at Anna Law Group, like A N A L A W G R O U P, or my first and last name, Anna Janaja. And um, you can DM us, there's contact links, emails, all of that, all over. I'm pretty easy to find. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And for, for the final thought, what would be what what would be one tip that, that you would just want to share? Uh, with the student athlete, because this is our dear student athlete segment. So as as we get ready to land this plane, what, what will be one tip, uh, one nugget, what what one one final thought to share with the student athlete? Um, secure your nil. Most of them haven't. Ninety nine point nine nine percent of them have not. 
Do not let your university file trademarks in your name. Uh, own your own trademarks. Own your own content. At, if you can't, if you have not even secured ownership of your NIL, you are not able to fully monetize it. If you monetize it at all, and most most people do not do it. Who should? Ninety nine point nine nine percent of people. That tiny investment you're going to make to do so is going to make you so much money for the rest of your life. Um, you know, just uh, don't be penny smart, pound foolish. I think that's the saying. <laughs> There's nothing else that needs to be said. There's nothing. You you just you you just close this out. You just close. <laughs> Anna, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to to hang out with us on, on the show. I'm grateful for you, grateful for the work that you're doing and how you're helping so many uh, individuals uh, out there really, really, you know, take hold and protect their IP and um, protect their legacy. So so thank you for taking time to stop by and thank you for all, all that you do. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> As you all can see, we just had an amazing episode uh, with Anna Janae J, and I hope you connect with her. I hope you follow her. And family, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.